Hi, this is Angela G with No Longer Lukewarm for Red Hot Christians and Wannabes. These videos are for those of you who like to listen while you're maybe doing something else. For those of you who like to read my blogs, you can uh, find the link in the description box below. So this one is called When Obedience is the Sacrifice. As Christians, we're held to higher standards than the world. We're expected to follow the requirements of those in authority over us as long as what they're asking us to do does not conflict with what the Bible commands. We do it because we're representatives of Christ and our behavior reflects on Him, and we do everything as to the Lord and not to men. But what happens when the requirements aren't wrong, but just annoying? Not only that, but others around you refuse to comply. This very situation happened to me this week at work. I learned a lesson about obedience that reminded me exactly who my boss really is. The mandate. I'm a high school English teacher. I get to school around 7 a.m. and leave around 3.45 each day. So when the email came through instructing English teachers to sign up to attend a meeting scheduled from 4.45 to 6.45 p.m. the next day, I was already not happy. To make matters worse, the purpose of the meeting was so that teachers from the two high schools in the district could get together to share ideas and plan for the next quarter. But the other high school teachers don't do the same things that we do at my level of English. They don't even do the same things as each other. The whole thing would be a pointless waste of time and it would add three extra hours to the end of my day. I mentioned what a bummer it was to my two teammates on my level. It's three hours after school, said one. I'm not going. What's the worst they can do? Slap our hands? Not going, said the other. Well, I decided that I'm not going either. But no sooner had I hit delete on the online sign-up sheet than the nagging feeling of guilt started in my head. I'm supposed to be representing Christ. Everybody knows I'm a Christian. If I just do whatever I want, what does that say about my integrity, I thought. Wasn't there a Bible verse about that? I looked it up. 1 Timothy 6, 1, let as many bondservants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of the Lord God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. Then Colossians 3, 23 popped in, and whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not to men. Besides, the voice in my head continued, I don't work for people. I work for the Lord. He called me to teach. He put his fingerprints all over my job when I got hired at my school over 10 years ago. I'm supposed to do my best at work to please him. But I don't want to, I whined back to the voice. Plus, if nobody showed up, maybe the person in charge would get the idea that the online version we have been doing to this point was fine. I was just being a conscientious subjector. It was like chaining myself to a tree or refusing to leave the sidewalk. I was protesting, really. I'm sure that's allowed, right? A choice to obey. But the nagging feeling just would not go away. I sat at my desk for, desk for over an hour after school, going back and forth in my head. I decided I wasn't going, and that was final. Then the nagging feeling stopped. Wait, a small shiver of fear shot through me. Did it stop because I had finally convinced myself that it was the right thing to do? Or did it stop because the Holy Spirit was tired of dealing with me? That scared me. If it was the Holy Spirit who had been behind the feeling of guilt the whole time, this was a game changer. I never want to be in a place in which I ignore God's voice so that he stops speaking. Plus, just a few weeks ago, I had been in a similar position. I had a strong feeling that I was supposed to share Jesus with a certain someone, but I didn't do it. I was in a place and in a time when it wouldn't have been exactly convenient, so I straight-armed the Holy Spirit. As soon as my split-second decision was made not to comply with what he was asking, I felt the sting of regret. I had made a promise to myself at that time to always look at things from the standpoint of hindsight, so now here was my chance to do things right. Which would I regret more, losing three hours of my time or the opportunity to show obedience to God? I decided to go after all. It was a good night. Long story short, it wasn't a bad meeting. Only one other lady at my level showed up from the other high school, and we actually had a good conversation. I found out that we have similar backgrounds and were hired the exact same year at our respective schools. She told me some stories from her years at her teaching at her school, a lower income version of my school. I shared some lesson plans and talked about my love for my kids. I also told her how I believed that God had sent me to my school. On the way home, I prayed for three accidents that I saw, and when I stopped for gas, I felt led to give out a Spanish tract I had in my purse to a guy pumping gas next to me. Looking back at the evening, I had the very strong feeling that I had done the will of the Lord. I believed that I was in the place he wanted me to be at the time he wanted me to be there. I think I had made the difference I was supposed to make. Whatever that difference actually was, only God knows. The whole thing was annoying and pointless in theory. 
But the reality was that God put me in my position for a reason. I'm not my own. I was bought with a price. He gave me the exact advantages, skills, and background I needed to do the job he sent me to do. Submissions to my, submission to my employer is submission of God, and obedience is the only option. When obedience is the sacrifice. The idea for the title of the article came from 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of the rams. When I was meditating on it this week, I believe the Lord showed me something about this verse that I never heard mentioned in any commentary before. Since no sacrifice is needed unless there is sin, this verse means that it is better to do what is right the first time than have to repent for doing what is wrong or sinful, which would require a sacrifice. And even when the obedience has a cost attached, our time, our effort, our submission, when we don't understand the point, that sacrifice is the obedience that God desires. Then when we look back on the situation, instead of regret, we will have the amazing feeling that we have done the will of the Lord.